Welcome to this fourth video on mechanical ventilation in this series of uh, videos on the principles of mechanical ventilation. In the next couple of videos I'm going to start introducing the idea of modes of ventilation and we're going to take them sort of one at a time and we're going to break down what each of these modes mean. But first off let's just let's just write out modes and let's just kind of write down some of the things we hear when we we talk about modes. Sometimes we hear people say assist control, which I'll just write assist AC, assist control. Sometimes we hear pressure control or even volume control. Um, then we hear things like SIMV. What's that? What's SIMV? Can something be pressure control and be SIMV? Can it be volume control and SIMV? Can it be pressure control and volume control? Can something be SIMV and assist control? This is the type of thing we're going to look at in the next couple of videos. And the, and the other thing we might hear is CPAP, what we call CPAP, P-A-P, CPAP and pressure support. What, what is this? What is pressure support? What's CPAP? Uh, how do we know how much work the patient's doing and how much work the ventilator's doing? So in the next few videos, we're going to look at these types of modes and we're going to break them down a bit and we're going to see what the patient does and, and what the ventilator does and, and what their sort of what their relationship is and how the ventilator takes control of the patient and what the patient's able to do um, when it interacts with the ventilator. So in this first video we're going to focus um, we're going to focus on assist control and we're going to touch on volume control as well and I'm going to try and identify the differences between SIMV and uh, AC and volume control and pressure control and how these are different. So let's first start just by identifying what types of breath a ventilator can give a patient. And it turns out there's, there's really three. There's three core types. We're talking about the principles of mechanical ventilation right now. Ventilators have advanced enormously in that there's now lots of different ways of delivering breath to patients. But in a sort of classical training of ventilation, there are three main types. So the first type is called a control breath. Okay, control. Let's just write breath, control breath. Maybe we'll color code these so that we can look at them in a second. The second breath, second breath type, I should say, is um, an assisted breath. Assisted. Okay, assisted breath. And then the third type, which we won't get to in this video, but I'll cover in the next video, is a either called spontaneous breath, spontaneous, or sometimes called pressure supported breath. Pressure supported. Oh, running out of room. Okay, so it's either a spontaneous or spontaneous breath or a pressure supported breath, or sometimes just called a supported breath. So that's our real, our three main types. We have a controlled breath, an assisted breath, and a spontaneous or pressure supported breath. So in this video, we're going to look at assist control and we're going to look at, um, using the example of volume control, we're going to look at how assist control operates as a mode of ventilation. So when we look at ventilation and when we look at how a ventilator interacts with a patient, we need to look at two things. And we need to look at what is the, what is the control scheme? So let's just put that as control. Control. How? What level of control is the ventilator taking over the patient, and how are the breaths delivered? How are breaths delivered? Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna write out assist control, AC, P. Uh, no, let's let's do volume control, AC, VC. Now, what does that mean? We sometimes see it with the VC in brackets, sometimes a slash between the AC and the VC. So what does that mean? That means that the patient is in an assist control mode, assist, and the C stands for control. You may see now that I've identified this, where, how this is gonna relate. So we have assist control, and then the VC is volume control, right? We know that, volume control. So let's create an example using our little timeline down here. 
Um, in a volume control mode, we control the volume. That should be pretty explanatory. So let's just put that here, volume control. So we control the volume, and we control the volume by setting a tidal volume. So let's say we have a tidal volume of 500 mils, and that's our tidal volume. Okay, we're gonna dial that into the ventilator. We can just press the knobs, turn it up to 500 mils, and press accept. And that's, we've now chosen our tidal volume. And we're gonna choose a respiratory rate, right? So let's say we set a respiratory rate of 10, 10 breaths per minute, that's our respiratory rate. And we're also gonna set things like oxygenation, like what their FI2 is and their PEEP and flows and this type of stuff. But for the most basic level, we're gonna look at the tidal volume and the respiratory rate. So as we learned in the last video, if you have a respiratory rate of 10 with 60 seconds in a minute, 60 seconds in a minute and a respiratory rate of 10, we know that our total cycle time is gonna be six, right? So 10 breaths over a minute, we can see them here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, means that there's gonna be six seconds here between breaths, okay? Which basically means with 10 breaths a minute and 500 mils, the controlled breaths, the ventilator is gonna give the patient a breath every six seconds. Okay, over that minute, the, the patient is gonna get a breath every six seconds. And those breaths are gonna be 500 mils in volume, okay? 500 mils. So if we look at, so these are our controlled breaths. So let's go down here. Controlled breaths. And they're called that because really the, that's the, the ventilator taking full control over the patient. This patient could be paralyzed. We could have given them a paralyzing agent and they're not gonna make any spontaneous breathing efforts. They're not gonna activate their respiratory muscles at all because they're paralyzed. Even so, the ventilator is gonna give them breaths every six seconds. So these are controlled breaths. They have really nothing to do with the patient. There's no interaction with the patient, okay? So the variable that causes these breaths to start, what we call a trigger variable, remember how when we looked at the phases of breath, we, saw, we said the start of inspiration was one of the phases. And what triggers the start of inspiration? That's called a trigger variable. And in this case, the trigger variable here is time, right? Time triggered. Okay, it's triggered by time because firstly, the patient isn't interacting with the ventilator in the example we've set. And because of the respiratory rate we've set, every six seconds, one of these breaths is gonna get delivered. So they're triggered by time. They're triggered by just the, the next six seconds going by and then another breath goes in. Okay, so the time triggered. The time triggered and they're 500 mils. Okay. Um, now, what happens if in between those breaths, let's say we're, bre we're going along here, breath, 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 and then the patient over here needs to take another breath. For some, let's say we the patient's no longer paralyzed in the example we used, the patient's awake enough to be able to take breaths. And the patient needs to take more volume. They need an extra breath to meet their minute volume demands or they just trigger a breath on the ventilator. What happens if in between these scheduled, mandatory sort of controlled breaths, what happens if the patient wants another breath? Well, in an assist control mode, he gets another breath. Here comes the breath, and it's gonna be exactly the same as the breath that he got from the control breaths. He just gets an extra one. But this breath is not the same as, as these breaths in one way. It's the same in every other way except for one. It's still gonna be 500 mils. It's still gonna be of whatever oxygen level we set. It's still gonna be exactly the same, except for the fact this was not triggered by time. This was triggered by the patient, okay? So let's look at assisted breath. Okay, it's, the, it's triggered by the patient. So patient triggered. And that's really important. Because that, that is the fundamental difference between a control breath and an assisted breath. However, it will still be 500 mils. Okay, it's going to be the same breath as the control breath in every way, in terms of the way the breath's delivered and the flow rates and the volume. But the difference is, is it's triggered by the patient. So right here, patient triggered. Okay, so in an assist control mode, the two breath types that you can have are an assisted breath, 
triggered by the patient, but the same as what we've set in, same as I put the numbers in for 500 mils and that's what the breath they're gonna get. Or they can get a control breath, which is based on time, triggered by time going by, 10 breaths over the minute, and is 500 mils. Okay, so you see there's two different types of breath that a patient can get. And the reason this is important is when we start looking into spontaneous pressure supported breaths in these other modes like CPAP and SINV, there's gonna be differences in whether what happens if the patient takes an extra breath between mandatory breaths, okay? Really that's what this, the, the, the idea of modes and understanding modes is about. It's really looking at what happens when the patient takes a breath. And in this case, if he takes a breath between these blue tick mandatory breaths, he gets another breath just like the one he would have got, but it's triggered by him. Okay, so that's assist control. And it's volume control because we are controlling, we are controlling the tidal volume, okay? We'll get more into volume control and pressure control later on. If this was a pressure control breath, we would just be controlling the pressure that this, the ventilator applies. Um, we're gonna get into volume control versus pressure control in another video. But really this video was to, was to teach you about assist control as a mode, what types of breath the patient gets, and what happens if the patient takes an extra breath between the, the control breaths that we set with our respiratory rate.